Hello, this is Dr. G with the Axiom Principle. Today, I'm going to show you a uh, a challenge that was issued to anti-SJWs or anti-thinkers, I guess. And um, yeah, why don't we just jump straight into it, shall we? In videos and in the comment sections, anti-feminists often take up the most extreme or the weakest feminist position they can find, or they just straight up misrepresent what the feminist position is. Instead, why not take up the strongest, most robust feminist argument you can find and really challenge yourself? So in my, in my previous attempts, actually, I was going to address this by going through a lot of different studies that I've read, uh, particularly in leadership studies that I've seen this a lot in because there's, the, of course, the wage gap that everyone's heard about and it's been thoroughly debunked or need more women in leadership positions because reasons. Um, there's underrepresentation is what they usually argue. And so in some countries they've in implemented gender quotas and I went over a bunch of that stuff. And then uh, before I knew it, I had an hour and a half long video. Um, so I'm just gonna condense this and go to the root cause. Usually that's usually the best way to go about it. There is a study, well, it's not really study. What they did, what somebody did was they wrote a blog about um, the differences that are going on on campus right now and who's teaching what. And in particular, we're looking at evolutionary psychology versus feminists. But uh, there, was a there was a blog done, it's called Evolutionary Psychology Strikes Back. Very ominous, great stuff. Um, but real quick, I'm just going to read the, in the intro and then get to the meat and potatoes a little bit. And then uh, there's a line in there I'm going to pull out and just really highlight for you. And then uh, hopefully that'll address the most robust and really, you know, the best argument I can find and really challenge myself. Well, let's just say I challenge myself. Just to point out, you know, there's a, there's experts agree that there is a difference between the sexes. There's, it's more than just biological. Uh, it's also behavioral, it's also psychological. And there's ties into chemistry that do that too really where the 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 line's been drawn is on gender differences particularly so there's there's been some skirmish and fight in the area of psychology on where gender comes from is gender a social structure is it biological in nature those that seem to think on the side of reason are uh, evolutionary psychologists they, they tend to you know things go through evolution our brain is nothing more than another organ be it an advanced organ but it is an organ nonetheless and all the garbage that comes with it comes with us as we develop makes sense to me I mean why wouldn't you think that right here here's the line so on one side you have the the evolution and biology who are arguing that um, there is there is a difference between the sexes, it's all genetic, it's all biological, um, and no amount of feminist agitation can change that. Okay. Unfortunately, it's, it's focused on men are philandering, non-nurturing, sex-focused, women are mothering keepers of the earth. It's yes and no, it, it depends on a little bit of culture, and, and this is where I made deviate from evolutionary psychology it's definitely in our genes for men to have a propensity to want to sleep with many women that's why we have a uh, culture a dogma in our culture I guess you could say across every culture on this planet where if men have many partners they're congratulated I guess sort of I hate to put it that way but it kind of seems that way it's very boastful and bragful about, especially in their youth. Uh, women, not so much. Much they uh, they slut shame, for example. It's a horrible thing to do. You need to find one and keep it. I guess. Don't necessarily agree with that either, but it is what it is, right? This is across every culture. It's not just American culture. It's every culture has this. Be it behind closed doors or blatantly written into religious text of having four wives and having 72 virgins at your death. It's pretty obvious that men are just kind of douchebags when it comes to this stuff. But it's definitely, it, it seems to be genetic. At least 
mainly because 90 to 100 percent of men are like this there's there's this dichotomy there's this fight going on between psychologists what's fun is, is each one is kind of arguing with each other here's here's the issue and let me just read this section it'd be easier uh, upsetting to the critics of evolutionary psychology theories is the suggestion popularized by the press that what is biological is unchangeable. Now, I don't agree with that, actually. It is changeable. We are wired a certain way, male and female. However, our behaviors can be modified by indoctrination of beliefs that is clear in every culture. There's, there's an underlying kind of theme and then there's the cultural differences that make it so unique, but the cultural differences still align with biology. Uh, one of my objections with evolutionary theory explains Mary Gergen, PhD, professor of psychology and women's studies at Pennsylvania State, and a hardcore believer that gender is primarily a social construct, is that it tends to stabilize and justify existing patterns of social relationships. They say, they are presenting just the facts, ma'am, but it just justifies the status quo. You can read the rest of the blog, I'll put it in the description below, but th this one paragraph, just this, oh yes. So researchers, a good number of them self-identified feminists, who had been happily testing sex differences, suddenly felt a call to action, not only to put out the fires, but as one said, but come up with alternative solutions to the questions of origins. And by origins, they mean gender roles and the differences between male and female. What is the origins? It, it just, it's like nails on the chalkboard once, once I hear that because it sounds so familiar to a different argument. I started to address the origins question because it was, it was being addressed very directly by evolutionary psychologists explains Mice Eagley, professor of psychology Northwest, uh, Northwestern University, who had been working on the questions of sex differences for 20 years. To her, the explorations of evolution were becoming imperial, suggesting that all sex differences had a biological basis. Gee, I wonder what would drive that idea. Maybe because we start with our biology? Just guess. Why would you have to come up with alternative solutions? Hmm, where does that sound very familiar? Michael Behe is a biochemist from Lehigh University in Pennsylvania. He's an advocate for an idea called intelligent design. The current controversy of evolution versus creationism is one in which you have a, a segment of the American population who for religious reasons has never been able to accommodate modern science and even most aspects of the modern world. They reject specifically evolution. Yes, there is a controversy. It's in the public eye. It's uh, national news now that uh, evolution is somehow wrong and that we have to uh, believe in something called intelligent design. And what I would say is that there is no controversy within the biologists and within people who work in evolutionary theory. The proponents of intelligent design, or creationism, who say it's only fair to consider their ideas, have a very curious idea of what fairness is. To insert their ideas into the classroom, even though they haven't won a scientific consensus is that the so-called evidence against evolution is not evidence. It's nonsense. And this doesn't change. The same arguments are there, but they've been refuted over and over and over again. So to pretend to students that there is a real controversy here is to mislead them. And the only reason to do that is so that people will be afraid to teach evolution. And that's really what they want. Evolution is the story of our past. and removing that story from our consciousness and from, our, from the education of our children would, is essentially to give them a serious case of amnesia. Uh, and half the people roughly uh, question evolution and think that some other theory, creationism, is just as likely to be true. So science gets better and better and better while 
the the person in the street uh, doesn't seem to accept what scientists conclude and there's there's the gap that that is a gap and that gap is getting bigger and it's very frightening because i think a society that turns its back on reason and prefers ideology is headed toward some kind of theocracy and you're headed toward iran for instance and i don't want that to happen to my country but wait there's more It's sometimes argued that in educating people, school and university level, they ought to be aware of the fact that there are differences of opinion, that there are controversies about things. Take, for example, biological evolution. And in the United States of America and some other places in the world too, there is opposition to the idea of biological evolution. People have ideas about, say, creationism or intelligent design. And the argument is that these ought to be taught too. Let's broaden the picture a little bit here and ask whether this means that if you were teaching astronomy in school, you should also teach astrology, or in medical schools that the ancient theory of demon possession ought to be taught and so on. And the minute that you broaden the conversation in that way, you begin to see that in fact, trying to be inclusive and fair and to have uh, all sides of the argument, all the objections that people might raise to something, is in fact going to interrupt and deeply pollute the educational process. That Sounds really familiar, don't you think? Sure, it's intelligent design, which most people think is stupid, ludicrous, doesn't hold any weight. Yet millions of people believe it for religious ideological reasons. Same too with these other theories. Evolutionary biology seems to be the way to go for medicine. Why wouldn't it apply to our mind? But apparently that wasn't good enough for feminists. They thought that because all evolutionary psychologists are men, they're just rubbing their male dominance all over psychology. That's very dogmatic to say. Yes, the patriarchy is infecting psychology, so let's make something up. Well, that's it for this video. Actually, no, there was, there was one other segment that, let's just say it was insulting. So I wanted to respond to one other person in that video, but I'll definitely show you his face and maybe just the clips that he said in their not entirety. Why, yes, Steve, you did end up answering your own question. You know why? When you mute anybody with a dissenting opinion, you block out anybody else that doesn't agree with you, you tend to listen to your own voice instead, or maybe just the voices that agree with you. Next time, Steve, try to be open-minded and listen to things that you don't agree with. Everyone else does that values reason.